Hello, my name is Fran Sands and welcome to MyBoxingCoach.com. Something a bit different uh, in this video. I don't know whether you're going to like it or not, really, to be honest, but a while ago, a long while ago, actually, I wrote an article and it was around six uh, tips for managing fear and it was really about my experiences of fear when I was a young boxer. Now, I never talk about really... I certainly don't... I talk about some of the emotional aspects of when I boxed, but... Um, I never say what I like to do, so I never refer to my own experiences technically, if you like, that sounds a bit weird. Because I want any person I work with on a coach boxing relationship to be a lot better than I ever was. So, um, but on, on certain things I will talk about when I, when, I, when I was a lad and I used to box, certain times I'll talk about that. And fear is one of those things, so I just want to talk you through this. It's quite a bit of a read, there's, I don't know, I, I don't know, it's a good few minutes. You'll either, you know, enjoy it or you'll hate it. I've never done it before uh, and you can, you know, obviously um, <laughs> stop watching anytime you want. Um, but I just want to talk you through fear and what it meant to me as a boxer. So, uh, fear, it's a noun, an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain or harm. And that's the Oxford English Dictionary definition of fear. So fear is part and parcel of life, whether we like it or not. In fact, we can go a step further and say that life depends upon fear. Without fear, our ancestors would have never survived long enough to procreate. Rather than fear your average saber-toothed tiger and therefore treat it with the kind of caution and that prudence would dictate, they would have wandered up to such an animal to pet it and been promptly eaten. Uh, the same is true in modern life. Without the emotion of fear, we would all put ourselves in many more dangerous situations than we could justifiably expect to escape unscathed. We would walk down that dark alley on a shortcut home. We would decide to go for a dip in the sea during a Category 5 storm. We would pass a negative comment on the shoes of our beloved in the minutes before leaving for a big night out. When bad things happen, Fear allows us to perform some pretty major feats of strength, power and endurance. Fear causes adrenaline to hammer through the veins, giving fuel to the ability to fight or flight. Fear sharpens the senses, allowing almost another world capability of predicting impending doom. And if it's fight, then fear allows you to fight like a wild cat if necessary. This is all very relevant to the boxer. When it comes to many types of sport, fear then takes on a new title. It morphs into words like pressure or tension or sometimes even stress. In boxing though, and other full contact sports, it stays as plain old fear. The big question in the first instance is what is the source of that fear? Is it fear of being physically hurt? Is it fear of hurting others? Is it fear of performance? Is it fear of loss? In many ways, it doesn't matter why we fear, or what we fear or why, what matters is how we respond and how we use it to our advantage. It matters that we maintain a level of fear in conventional terms, this is absolutely sensible. After all, it's not every day that you take on an opponent who is trained hard in order to render you unconscious. A fight is actually quite a serious event. Likewise, a boxer doesn't take up the sport in order to consistently experience the feeling of losing. It is perfectly normal to fear losing, just as it is perfectly normal to fear, have the cr fear having the crap beaten out of you. The trick is to maintain a level of fear that provides the benefits of the emotion without allowing that same fear to become all-consuming. As Mike Tyson said following the philosophy of Customato, fear is your friend. Let fear get out of control and it quickly becomes a deadly enemy. As a boxer, it is, no, it is not the done thing to talk in any depth about the fears that you experience in the run-up to the fight. You want an aura of fearlessness, an absolute and total demonstration of confidence in your ability to smash to pieces anything that's put in front of you. You determine to convince yourself and anyone around you, especially your opponent, that you fear nothing and will stop at nothing to get your win. However, I am no longer a boxer. I have not fought competitively in a very, very long time. So I can now talk quite freely about the experiences I went through in the weeks, days, hours, and minutes before a fight. I simply would not have talked about at any length about any of this while I was boxing, I acknowledged maybe to my nearest and dearest that I was nervous, but I certainly wouldn't run into the kind of detail I'm going to put across here. Bear in mind what I describe as personal to what I felt at the time. Other boxers may not recognise anything I talk about here. Some boxers may have experienced something similar or even more profound, but I speak here only for me. 
I longed at the time to be totally fearless like many others appeared to be, but there you go. I feel now in retrospect that the more challenging the fight and the associated fears, the more precious and satisfying the victory. I should probably start with what I felt was the source of my fear. I, as I mentioned, the source of fear for me is rather academic. The key is how you react to that fear. Boxing is a performance business. You must deliver peak performance and anything less brings with it the risk of not winning the fight. Certainly I became more exper as I became more experienced, I don't ever think I feared being physically hurt in any serious way. Boxing training prepares you perfectly for dealing with someone trying to hit you. What scared me more than anything was experiencing defeat. It hurt like hell and made you feel like crap all ends up. Boxing training does not prepare you for defeat, not in any way whatsoever. I wanted to perform well and win fights. The level of sacrificing and preparing for a fight, level of sacrifice and preparing for a fight is immense. A win quite simply makes it all worthwhile. In the weeks before a fight, I simply never held any fears at all. The overriding emotion was one of excitement and I often felt anger towards the opponent, whoever that was, for making me work this hard and sacrifice this much. But I was never nervous. Remember that in amateur boxing, you will often know nothing about an opponent until the fight actually starts. This fear of the unknown did play a part, but certainly not in gym time. Excitement was what it was about, anticipation of fight night. For me, it was the morning of the fight that really signaled the beginning of the change of emotions that we could broadly describe as fear. My eyes would flicker open and I knew that the day of days had arrived. That's when the emotions kicked in and kicked in hard. My aim throughout the, f the day was to take my mind off the fight. I couldn't sit there brooding with anger and hatred. Not only would this cloud judgment and risk a loss of control, but it would leave me drained. Sure, I would get flashes of anger during the minutes before the fight and anger at the fact that this guy was making me go through this even though he wasn't, I'd chosen to do it myself but those flashes were very temporary. Being angry for prolonged periods takes it out of you. It's a, it's a waste of valuable energy. During the inevitable minutes that my mind did fix on the upcoming fight, I would visualize positive images from the outside looking in. I would see myself effortlessly controlling this faceless opponent. I would visualize my hand being raised on the uplifting journey home where we could recount key passages of the fight I'd quickly then switch my mind to others' matters, waiting for the time to come that we embarked upon our journey to the venue. When I was travelling to the venue with teammates, there would often be some light-hearted banter. This often helped, as whilst boxing is ultimately an individual sport, in the amateur game there is a good deal of support amongst boxers from the same team. You're all going through the same process, so there is always empathy. Even in a group, though, we would often lose ourselves in our own thoughts for prolonged periods still working hard to visualize positive outcomes. This was when I encountered what was one of the most weird effects of nerves and fear, sleepiness. It's pretty difficult to look intimidating when all you can do is yawn and rub your eyes in an effort to avoid drifting into a deep slumber. On the journey though, I didn't need to keep up appearances. So I often allowed myself to take 40 winks. Once at the venue though, alertness was the order of the day and as we pulled into the car park, I saw the building in which I'd be fighting things really got serious. When in the venue, I could break, basically break down preparation into three main phases. Phase one, the formalities. This is the formal process of weighing in and being checked out by the doctor. Even at this stage, I was more often prone to considering the likelihood of the weight not being right or the opponent not passing the doctor's scrutiny. It would be macho to say something like, I couldn't wait to get in there. However, a part of me always felt that I would, that, that this, uh, I wouldn't be that disappointed if a fight did fall through. Looking back, this again, I'm sure is natural. Not wanting to do something and actually going through with that something by your own choice are two very different things. It's fine to have fear, it's how we respond that counts. On occasion, the cue for the weigh-in uh, and the medical check could often be the first time you come into any kind of visual contact with your opponent. So there was an overall theme of all the boxers in the line trying to look cold and sinister and plain dangerous. I wonder whether that's my guy. That lad looks about my size. And other basic questions would cross your mind. Each boxer even looked remotely the same dimensions as each other would be eyeing each other up as the possibilities of ending up squaring off an hour or so later. One thing for sure though, these checks <clears throat> took you to the point of knowing whether your fight was on or whether it was not. Reality struck at this point. You were heading for a fight 
and that was all there was to it. There were a number of occasions where my fight never materialised. It has to be said, this was often a bittersweet moment. Bitter because you had no chance of experiencing a win, experience a, in, a win on that night, especially after training had gone well. Sweet because there was something to be said for relaxing and watching other boxers scrap it out. Phase two, the preparation. We all do warm-ups before training sessions, but on fight night, the warm-up takes on a whole new dimension, preparing the mind as well as the body. This was the time when I was reduced to a single word answers, to questions and a feeble smile and nod of the head and an acknowledgement of a message of good luck. I wasn't trying to be moody and intimidating. I was more worried that my voice would break with the nerves. Difficult to sound assured when your voice keep, keeps hitting the high notes. It was also a time there where that annoying tiredness could strike, yawning away like I was ready for bed. But mostly it was a time of not being able to sit still, being constantly on the move, pacing up and down, the mind racing or shadow boxing, working hard to focus on positive images of the fight, reassuring myself that I'd worked so hard in the gym and that would always count towards getting a win. Getting the competition gloves and enjoying the feeling of them during a hard session on the pads, an absolute must for any warm-up for a fight, brought home to me that I felt good. Well, most of the time anyway. Feeling sluggish during a pad session was a real downer and did nothing for the sense of well-being. Ring walk and introductions, phase three. The journey to the ring was always memorable. On many occasions, this was the first time that I or I absolutely knew who we were fighting. By this point in proceedings, I felt at my most alert. The yawning was nowhere to be seen and I was probably relieved at the fact that the opening bell would extinguish all fear and nervousness. That's not to say mishaps don't happen. As a young boxer, I had the honour of sharing the ring with a boxer called Paul Ingle from Scarborough in the UK. To this day, Paul is one of the nicest people I ever met in boxing. Just a superb lad in every way. He went on to become IBF featherweight champion of the world. So yeah, he was something a little bit special. Back to the story, I knew nothing of Paul at the time. I was a regional champion, he was a regional champion and we were boxing off to progress to the next stage in the tournament. My to coach told me nothing of Paul's calibre, pleading ignorance, probably best really. I had suffered no more nerves than usual. As we both entered the ring, I noticed that Paul was wearing quite long trunks, but I could barely see any of the fabric because they were covered in badges. I knew instantly that he was one of the best I had ever faced because each badge meant that he was a national champion of some description or other. This realisation caused an initial shock, but I quickly managed to get a grip and with a boxer's faultless logic, I thought I can beat him. Then Paul turned round to take a drink from his corner man, only to reveal that at the back of his shorts it also, were also festooned with badges. It never rains, but it pours. I had a good go, but if I'd have fought Paul a hundred times, I'd have lost them all. He was just that good. Point being, up to the very last second before that opening bell, doubts could surface because of the unknown. Once the bell went, though, I knew what I, I was dealing with certainties and I was doing what I had trained so hard to do. The benefits of going through the pre-fight process paid dividends in the form of a sharper mind, more powerful shots and greater endurance. The fear helped me on my way. So in the interest of some practical advice, here are six tips uh, to deal with fear in boxing. Now, some of these, I would hope that you can pull some of these out and use them elsewhere in life, but let's get through them. Uh, tip one, getting the preparation right. The more prepared you are in gym time, the easier to deal with are the emotions before the fight. If you've not put the training and road work in, then self-doubt will amplify your fear. There is no cheating yourself in these situations. You need to know that you can fight hard for the duration of the contest. Positive visualisation will be much easier with a solid and committed training regime behind you. British Army used this term something like um, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Uh, and it's just so true. You know, get your preparation right in any, in any walk of life and you'll be good. Right? Put the time and effort in. Tip number two, simply resign yourself. The word resignation has uh, negative connotations. You resign in the game of chess and you lose. You resign from a job and the pay packet and the perks go out of the window. But when it comes to boxing, then resigning yourself that the fact, to the fact that you are absolutely positively going to be in a fight will make you more able to put your fears into a context that you are happy to deal with. This context is winning, pure and simple. 
You are dealing with fears because you're going to fight and you're going to win. And that's it. Resign yourself. It's happening. Focus on the fact that it's happening. Tip three, leave hatred behind. Avoid becoming embroiled with how much you hate an opponent. Feeling hatred towards someone is easier when fear takes hold. Fear gives you a reason, however irrational, to hate that person. Rather than focusing on hatred, focus on clinical precision, supreme skills and power, all positives in your quest to douse the inferno of fear. Hatred can cause rash actions and an ignorance of skill. Be calm, be collected and be a winner. Tip number four, and breathe. Knots in the stomach are not very pleasant. A practical way to get momentary relief from the discomfort of knots in your stomach is to take a massive deep breath. At the very top of the breath, the ache will disappear. Of course, it'll come flooding back when you breathe out, but it was good while it lasted, wasn't it? Stay frosty, literally tip number five. If like me, you experienced the yawns, get a good soaking with ice water ice cold water over the head back and front gives you a jolt instantly invigorates the senses i wouldn't suggest doing that before a job interview but you get the point i guess this is why people have their cold showers for us it used to be a bucket of ice cold water oh, horrific and tip number six the final tip keep your eye on the prize finally focus on the win winning just makes all of the fears worth it fight off the negative and see your hand raised at the end. It's why boxers do it all, to get that win. Fact is, when you are heading for a fight, fear is gonna walk with you every step of the way. Just make sure that you take the positives and manage the negatives. Boxing, boxers deal with winning. No more, no less. If you're still sat here listening to me, well done. Uh, I'm sure you've got the ability to become a boxer with a level of resilience that you have demonstrated. Um, seriously, thank you. I hope you've got something from that. I didn't just read it out because I like the sound of my own voice. Um, sign up to the beginner boxer toolkit. You, you might be able to hear an engine. We've got a canal running through back the past the back of the boxing club, and we get lots of canal barges. And that engine noise is a canal barge. Sorry. Um, uh, download the beginner boxer toolkit. Um, Find out why your less dominant arm is your most powerful lesson and why chess and shadow boxing have so much in common. And why a little swinging of the heavy bag is good, but a lot of swinging is bad. Um, otherwise, thank you. My name is Franz Sands and this is mybox.com.